to now. It was just about last week that this program had a discussion on the killings um, in Plata State on the back of a report by Amnesty International that about 112 people had been killed cumulatively on on the plateau and also in Kaduna State. We had spoken with the, uh, with the executive director of Amnesty International here in Nigeria and also the commissioner for information in Plateau State um, on the development. And not quite 24 hours, 48 hours, we finished our discussion. And uh, another 25 lives were reported uh, lost in Plateau State. Um, innocent travelers who were on their way back from um, a religious program from Bochi State traveling to Ikare in Ondo State uh, were said to have been brutally murdered uh, on their way back. And this is what has now set Plateau State on edge again. Uh, yesterday, the governor declared a 24-hour curfew uh, in the state, uh, dusk to dawn, and you also heard there, I think, uh, some reports from the Commissioner for Information who uh, also gave an update on what the situation was in the morning before the curfew was declared. So there are questions as to what is the circle of violence that we're noticing? Uh, what can be done to stem it? Um, is this all related to the bandits, uh, to the banditry up up north, happening, happening in Zamfara State, with a report they tried to capture there, which the military seems to be on top of. Or is this something different? Is this a reprisal? Um, you know, was this premeditated? What could have happened? And what should happen in this sort of situation where people who know nothing about anything, who were simply trying to make their way from one point to another, could have lost their lives in such a very brutal situation? Uh, these are the questions we're going to be posing to our guests this morning. We're joined this morning uh, by a former Assistant Inspector General of Police, um, Barrister Felix Ogbaudu. Thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily this morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning, viewers. I'm sure you have been watching development on the plateau. Yes, sir. And when you heard the report of 25 people, uh, we understand that figure has since gone up. Uh, that you know more people have been reported dead um, and some have been rescued mercifully what went through your mind well um it's it's so sad really i got some information which i've not been able to verify i was told that in the area where this thing happened they had a ceremony or so there was a kind of traditional ceremony that was going on there and these people that were traversing through the place, and I ran into them or something like that, and that was how they blocked the road, attacked them, and killed so many of them. But even if it, even if it was going to be an issue of interrupting what you were doing, that's not an excuse for you to take people's lives, innocent lives. These are people from the southwest who went to Bauchi for a religious program, they're Muslims, on their way back in their buses, they got attacked. Over 25 now reported killed, some injured, hospitalized, and all of that. So it's um, it's so worrisome. One thing that bothers me too is that um, I begin to want the level of the lo level of awareness, consciousness of Nigerians at that level is so super. I don't really know what gives them that motivation to do all those kind of things. So I think we need to address some of these issues. Before some people start giving it some religious coloration, those that were killed were Muslims coming from Bauchi. That part of Plateau State, I'm told, the predominantly Christians. And what they were celebrating, nobody knows. These guys were just driving past, they didn't do anything, they didn't harm them, they didn't obstruct anything, and they just attacked them. It's the level of insecurity in the country is becoming so worrisome. See, some of that political crimes, less, some of that parts of the country, a lot of reasons have been reduced. One is all poverty, unemployment, hunger, hopelessness, frustration, and all of that. But that these are not excuses for people to take laws into their hands. Most of the extent of which taking people's lives. It's not. And I also want to caution this question of oh, uh, security agents have been deployed there, uh, the place is calm, and all of that. 
you hear that three, four days, thereafter something else happens again. There's a reoccurrence. So it's not just if we're able to maintain some sanity, you know, security in a place, it should be sustained. The now question of to do will overcome when talking about the situation. Tomorrow it erupts again. Mm. So that's it. Well, there have been lots of uh, press statements as a result. The mm. uh, Plateau State Government has declared a curfew. The yes. Ondo State Government has urged for calm. Yes. Uh, a lot of uh, statements mm. have been released. The president, uh, the presidency, also released a statement uh, condemning very strongly yes, the yes. killings. Mm. The Nigeria Governors Forum has also condemned the killings in very strong terms. Um, I, Plateau State is no stranger to religious crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had different types of conflict besiege the plateau. Um, and it would seem that since the year 2000, when it first of all witnessed its um, first killings on, um, on religion, I mean, happened around religion, and then now it's, it's now morphed somewhat into uh, farmers, herders, conflict, so we're told. Um, Sometimes it, it would seem that there is no differentiation between farmers' herders' conflict and what has now become a religious crisis, or what you know. People have said, "Oh, don't make this, um, don't give this any coloration." But how easy is it not to do that when we look at one, the history of Plateau State, when we look at two, the number of people who were killed in the, sec on the circumstances under which they were killed and the environment in which they were killed. How easy is it for security agents, for instance, not to do that? Uh, the thing is that I think Plateau State is predominantly Christian. And some of these headsmen are talking about that are nomadic. When they get to a place, a location, they want to take over and all of that. They don't want to accept the, the blunt reality that some of the most of the crops, if not all, that they used to feed their cows, those are the source of income. Mm -hmm. Now, you are in a place where you don't belong, and you will not listen to what you are told to do, that you won't want to comply. And you just think that uh, you can lodge over. And that's really the big all over the country, not just Plato State alone. Mm -hmm. So I think we really need to address this issue. The Fulani headsmen thing is becoming something else. Then again, the issue of religious coalition, which they bring out, they are Muslims versus Christians and all of that. What you need to address all of this. But, uh, but my, those kind my, of things my matter suggestion is this. when an investigation is taking place. Yes, my, 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 my suggestion is this. Not just my investigation. We need to do a lot of reorientation of Nigerians. Like National Orientation Agency, for instance. Let Negora organize a sensitization program to enlighten the people that when so so thing happens, this is what you should do and not this. Because, but I don't want to believe too that they're ignorant of what they're doing, that they're not aware of the fact that what they're doing has very serious far reaching consequences for the security of this country. And we cannot continue like this. Hmm. So I think we need to really, really um, reorientate these this people. The, the, the citizenry, wherever they are. They've called a number of peace meetings here and there. At the end of the day, nothing comes out of it. But merely dancing in circles. Mm. Well, and they, they give they, some they, undertaking to be law abiding, to behave and all of that, but all of a sudden, thereafter, is something else. Some people believe that, that that is a problem. The fact that when this sort of killings, this kind of heinous crimes happen, what we do are peace meetings. Instead of us to bring the perpetrators to book yes. and say human lives have been lost, you know, if we find the people who have done it, to charge them for murder and let them face the music. Uh, you know, how has, what exactly do peace meetings seek to achieve in situations like this? Well, it's peace meeting, but that brings me to a point I've always uh, um, talked about when I've been uh, occasions like this. The issue of deterrence, the issue of deterrence in this country. People just think that they can do anything, get away with it, and nothing will happen to them. So if A does something and nothing happens to him, B will be encouraged to do it again. Even if A who did it before and nothing happened to him, he'll be encouraged to do it the second time. And the peace meetings, why is it, why is it that when they hold their peace meetings, 
they come to agreement, agreement terms that have done that everybody had, you know, concedes to behaving one way or the other to ensure there's peace. At the end of it, nothing happens. So it's just a matter of rhetoric. People are not sincere. You just go there, talk here and there. At the end of the day, they will run it up with prayers and all of that. But at the end of the day, we're back to square one. Well, perhaps we might not be back to square one on oh. this one because just yesterday the police did release a statement saying that uh, they've sent a Deputy Inspector General of Police, Sanusi Limo, to lead the police intervention team. They also say that they have arrested 20 suspects and 33 victims have also been rescued. So it does look like the police are very interested in this particular story and they are willing and ready to investigate what is uh, going on in the state. So I'm just wondering, are you hopeful that this time around, perhaps the outcomes might be different? Well, like I said before, it's a good thing the IG sent a GIG, who is in charge of operations, to lead the police team there, to go and try and resolve and all of that. But Hadela said, it's not just deploying officers there to maintain peace when something, when some violent form of violence erupts. We are talking about sustainability. You don't just deploy security personnel, the moment peace is restored, then you pull out. We must make sure that the, some states have been appealing to the government to go and establish military formations in their areas. Hmm. There's, a military, there's a military operation on, on the plan. Yes, yes. But the again, again, the sustainability is what I'm talking about. Yeah, Operation Safe Haven has been there for it, a, yes. a long time now. Yes, this is happening. So why? Why? That is the question. Have they been adequately empowered, motivated? Like I was in, in those good old days, we used to have police patrol teams 24-7. These days, the vehicles are not even there. When they have vehicles, they will tell you there's no fuel in the vehicles. I recall some years back, some, a, a village was attacked, I think in Ondo, Ekiti State, by Fulani headsmen. The victims who went to the police station that was closed by that overseas that area to report, look, this is a problem. Please come and help us, come and help us. The policeman said, ah, look at that very good there. There's no fuel in it. How do you want to put in that state of mind, that condition, to come and give you money to fuel your vehicle? It doesn't make sense. So that is where the government really needs to sit up. And like I've always said, our biggest challenge in this country is that we have failed to prioritize security. And I keep on saying repeatedly that in the absence of security, no form of human en endeavor takes place, be it economic, social, religious, educational, whatever. Nothing. So we must reject the security structure. You know. Let's flip this to Lagos now. Yes. My colleague Ayo has a guest. Well, thank you, Malkwe. We have with us here Onye Kachi Adekoya, who is a security consultant, and uh, thank you very much for joining us thank this you. morning. Uh, I don't even know where to begin with this with you on this one. Um, one of the things any, many people would probably say, probably first of all ask you is, how does this differ from other issues around insecurity that we have had? There are those who are already putting religious colorations to it, ethnic colorations and all of that. Uh, is is it just the same, or is is it's diff totally different to you? Um, I mean, it's a sad day for Nigeria again. Uh, here we go again. As I say, most times I'm on set here. Um, it's either it's 500 persons 10 years ago in the same place who killed, or it's um, 80 persons three years ago. Now it's um, 25 persons. Some reports claim as much as 33 persons. Uh, with about 50-something persons missing. I understand when the government tries to manage um, what goes out there in terms of the numbers. Um, sadly, even on Sunday, uh, we're still receiving reports that some of the hospitals around Plato were still receiving victims of reprisal killings on Sunday, uh, which is why the government was forced to declare curfew by 2 p.m was because in the early hours of Sunday morning, um, you know, um, people were being killed. Plain truth. I schooled in Joss. I lived in Rukoba Barracks. I lived in Basa, Basa local government. So the issue of uh, Joss is a bit of a touchy one. Let's take our minds back to the history of what has happened. And your question is, how is this different? This is not different. 
these are not matters of security, though we, we are here to speak from a security perspective. This is an, it's an, it's a social issue. And where you don't have social justice, you cannot have social order. Some days back, some persons were killed in Basa. Following that, there was an allegation that the GOC Triamod Division, who is a Muslim, has been sent there to support a certain side. Three more division quickly came out with a statement to debunk that uh, insinuation, you know, and rightly so, had to be very fast. Three days later, we saw within the security circle a notice from Jazz Boko Haram saying that in the coming days, Play 2 will witness a level of carnage they have not witnessed before. Unfortunately, on the day of the procession to bury the 25 or 33 people killed, you had a convoy of seven or five buses. I'm sure they were trying to beat off the major traffic around the major road around Terminus. So they took the alternate route. And they ran into this convoy. This is a convoy of a, a people who are angry, agitated, going on mass burial. And I'm sure somebody somewhere shouted, those are Muslims. That's all. In Plato State, that's all it takes. If you are in the <laughs> Anguarimi, Anguarugu, uh, yeah, Anguarimi, Anguarugu axis, or just not axis, and you are in the middle of a situation, and somebody shouts, he's a Christian. That's all it takes. So it's a social issue, really. The 500 people killed 10 years ago, look at the statement of government. Investigation we set up, the perpetrators we brought to book. Three years ago, it is something people. Investigation we set up, perpetrators we brought to book. The bastard killing, investigation we set up, perpetrators, the perpetrators never get brought to book. So, a social issue then. No, well, so when you say, my apologies, when yes. you say, you know, it's, uh, you know, Christian, Muslim thing, um, is, it, is this something that is lost on, 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 the, on the government or the authorities who are supposed to deal with this? Because you sound so authoritative. No, no. It's not lost on the government at all. And let's be fair to the political state governor who incidentally is the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum. Like the DIG said there, the retired DIG said, several inter-religious councils has been set up. Councils of chiefs on peace set up. Conversations back and forth also set up. Conversations are going on in the play too. And for some time, up until this time, you know, these tensions just fled. But what are we missing here? The DSS, sometime late last year, if not early this year, issued out an advisory, which got leaked somehow, that they are noticing insurgents uh, and some kind of movement into the Plato, which will suggest a staging of a series of attack. And so they were warning preemptively of this. It's out there. The DSS warned on this occasion. Now, is it lost on government? No. The three are not deaf. The three are not deaf is in Plato. I schooled in Plato. At the time, you couldn't even, there were no secret courts on campus where we were because Plato was seriously militarized. The DSS has a significant presence in the Plato. The problem is social. The way we are structured, we cannot efficiently and effectively manage crisis situations like this. What's the, why is that difficult? If it's a, you know, you say it's a security, it's a it's social, a social matter. problem, it's a social matter. Not, a sec, not a security issue per se. That it's could a have social been... matter fueling a security crisis. Okay, so, and this has been on for how long? You say it's My been God, it's over, it's over 20 something years now. It's a cycle. I'm, I'm completely abashed yes. right now because I'm wondering if we knew this was going to come to place. I mean, just as you said, the military is there, the DSS is there. Who should have gotten ahead of it? Good question. The police. The police. It is not the, for example, in Kaduna State, and we hope something doesn't happen very soon. 
behind the Staff and Command College, there are reports of insurgent and bandit activities around that axis, but they have not made any incursion into the military ins ins um, um, installations and um, facilities. Kaduna State, with all the killing, has significant military presence. The military, until called out, would not get involved in issues of civil, civil governance. So, yes, the military is there. Not their business. The DSS is there. They provide intelligence, which in this case they have provided. But what is the institution or structure of policing in the state? How many police officers do you have in Plato? I, I would love for the police authorities to let us know. Now they have sent a crack team from the IGP. To do what? What happens? There's Operation Safe Haven. What you do is that they say there's massive deployment. You deploy in the Plato. It takes this circle of violence. will peter off after two weeks. Then everywhere calms down. Then what happens in the next two weeks is that if you stroll unwittingly into a Christian Muslim dominated area and you are a member of the, uh, you get killed. And bodies, you wake up the next day, you will see bodies in canal. Are you by any chance suggesting that government is only paying lip service to the security of its people? No, we are not saying that. We are saying that a man cannot give what he doesn't have. In which case, who in is this case, man? there is no state police. My point, and I make the point again, we talk about community policing. The ideology, the ideology to policing in Nigeria is, is, is a big challenge. You police from the grassroots up. The people own the police. The police don't own the people because policemen are citizens drawn from the community to ensure security. The police is supposed to prevent. Yes. Not necessarily fight insecurity. It's supposed to prevent. That's what the constitution says. At least that's what I have read in the constitution. And I do not think that that has been amended. Now there yes. is, uh, just as you said, yes. there is uh, uh, information that's gone ahead. Intelligence has gone ahead to say this thing may likely happen. Yes. So what, in your opinion, could have stopped the police from going to pick these people who could be responsible for this trouble that is going to come? What could have prevented Good that? Good question. Um, again, failure of leadership. Failure of proper structuring, failure of poor resourcing, and the failure of the placing the right emphasis. In security management, we talk about flashpoints. You already know the known flashpoints in the play too. What you typically do is you have received this intelligence report, which I think happened. You meet with the leaders of thoughts, community leaders within that area. You set up a pally and agree basic parameters to ensure peace, and agree that if anybody sees something, says something, there will be a structured response. What happened in Basa happened in the late hours of the night. Where was the response? Where was the structure? If there was a structure, was it adequately resourced? Let me know, just come back to Lagos. Let me use Lagos for an example. When Fashola was governor of Lagos, he tried to say, okay, in policing, if we don't have a criminal database, how can we quickly profile certain people, address the issues, isolate the persons in the event of a likely crisis? Immediately, you mount surveillance around known actors. So let's have a criminal database. Monies were spent. Systems were deployed to the police stations for the police to capture, on a first-line basis, data or suspects so that the state can have its own database. The police didn't oblige because the federal institution. What can the Plato State Governor do in a true sense of it? When at the Security Council meeting, we have read the DSS report, we have agreed on what to do, we have deployed mechanisms, and BASA happens. So you say the governor is powerless? I've not said so. He should okay. come out and tell us. All right. Clearly, we'll, 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 we'll take that further when we come from this break because definitely there is so much uh, to unpack in all of this conversation. Do stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. Sonia Kachi Adekoya is still with us this morning. He's a security consultant. Just before we flip this back to Abuja, uh, what are the, perhaps there are other considerations that people, because, you know, the first thing that comes to me, for, for God's sake, is more than 20 years, you said, that this mm, has been yes. on. Uh, consequently, there has to be 
a, a root cause. There has to be something that is making the same thing happen over and over again, almost like we can't do anything about it. Is there, you say it's a social issue. Is there anything economic about this matter that, that's, that's making that any interests that, that, is being, that is at stake? Yeah, so we need to, I, I mean, certain things we shouldn't be saying on national TV. Uh, you then need to break down, you deconstruct the narrative to the local level. What has been fueling the unrest between the residents of just north and just south and the other parts of the Plato? If you do a deep dive, you understand where the issues are. And I'll leave that for the governor to resolve. I'm a security person. I don't want to go into conjectures. But clearly, the DSS sends you advance notice of a warning. You are the chief security officer of your state. If you had the wherewithal, I would have thought that, you know, in a, in a more proactive way, some of this issue could have been prevented. The danger of the play to is that it's vengeance. What is happening now is vengeance. Some people have had family members killed 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Some of us were almost caught up in some melee on Bauchi Road. Myself in God saved me. A lot of travelers, you know, we are now in the social media age where you can hear things pop up. It's sad. The killing of those Muslims, very sad. What happened is they were caught up in the midst of protests. And at that time, the crowd became a mob. So what, what you saw there was a mob mentality. In the deep pain of what had happened, people reacted. Why did they react like that? They, it's because it's a trust, trust issue. What trust do they have in the governance and the system of governance to ensure justice is done? Hmm. If people don't have that sense and confidence of, of justice being served in their governments, and sometimes people take laws into their hands. So we can go back and forth. Basa killing is bad. Miyago killing is bad. This one killing is bad. So what way, where's the way forward? The way forward, and I, I must continue with this, the way forward is state policing. Until we state police, we would not understand the challenges we are having now fully. The Taliban has now taken over Afghanistan. We joke and say, what's the correlation between Nigeria and um, ta um, Afghanistan? Clear correlation. An ideology has taken over a country, a persistent ideology. The thought and thinking that you can commit a crime and get away with it under the name of ethnicity or religion is pervading itself within the society. And that is threatening the fabric of society and threatening the sense of social order. So these matters we see are purely social. Essentially, you're saying that we know what is going to happen and we're doing nothing. Well, until... <laughs> The National Assembly members quit playing politics. We have heard from the Northern Governors. We've heard from the Sultan of Sokoto. We've heard from the Emir of Muri. We've heard from the Emir of Katsina. We have heard from the Alafi of Oyo. People across this country are voicing strongly, you know, a sentiment opposing this continued structure we have to security. Security situations are local. The treatment of risk and threat factors should also be local. We must deconstruct. The military is overstretched. Mm. Once upon a time, once you deploy the military street, everybody goes back. You dare not come out. But Operation Safe Haven personnel are deployed at strategic points in the plateau, perpetually deployed. The military is in operation in across 34 states in this country. The military cannot. The military is trying the military is also paying the ultimate sacrifice. Soldiers and officers are dying every day. Let us not forget the major general that was killed in Plato State just how many months ago because he was caught up in a situation like this. So, I mean, the, the chicken is coming home to roost, as we see. This issue of insecurity is now touching. A commissioner in Niger was kidnapped. Some local government chairmen are under threat. So for how long? And at we... a time when some members of the National Assembly also so they say they can't go back home. Oh, of course. Oh, you know, just a, uh, it was just last week we had that amnesty report as well, talking about you know how that more than a hundred people have been killed and so many uh, you know thousands of people, over hundreds and almost thousands of people um, kidnapped over time and all of that. 
over and all of this happened i think within just two states question that comes to mind is we know these trends we know these patterns we could get ahead of it we could say this should not happen yes why are we not doing what we need to do sincerity of uh, purpose and clear failure of leadership on whose part on the part of leadership like, leadership in this state in this case now unfortunately the box stops at the table of the presidency you see. let's look at kaduna state for example kaduna state has a muslim governor a muslim deputy governor and then you say there is no consequence of this action what has happened is that some people feel namune if you say namune as you say for example um, the people there are our own people nothing will happen to us and the carnage in kaduna state is being fueled by a thinking to say okay it's our time to dominate and then we can do what we want to do and get away with it at the time how can you the validate, governor, how can you validate no no this? This, you see the thing is my father is from Ogo state my mother is from the east i lived and school in the north still live in the north and these are not just conjectures you need to do a special investigation report to the ground when the governor of Kaduna State was told that, you know, there's been a social order in this place. If he's a Christian governor, Muslim deputy. Muslim governor, Christian deputy, that structure inverted always. Now you have Muslim governor, Muslim deputy, and some people have misread. The governor says, I don't want to get involved in all this pedestal issues. Let's deal with the issue of governance. It doesn't matter if you are Christian or Muslim, let us run a government. And he wants to run his government. But you see, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's an ideologicalist or an idealist thinking. You must set governance within the context of historical structure. But that, that, that didn't even change the 1993, forgive me for going back to that time, uh, position of people voting en masse for a Muslim Muslim ticket. Oh, fantastic. But now it's 20 years old. We are 210 million people. You are in a state like Kaduna State. I mean, you can ask yourself, what is fueling this issue in Kaduna? Me it's a thinking, a misguided thinking. Mm. Just people take... In Nigeria, you cannot just say, okay, for example, it doesn't matter. We saw some reports that came out and said that within the, the apex of the Nigerian security architecture are all Muslims. Does, should this really matter in a safe society? No. So why does it matter? Because we fail to appreciate our own local context. The issue of federal character, balancing these issues. Come back to the issue of plate to state, social order. There is a social order which is almost being upended. And there is resistance mm. from the indigenous of plate to. Okay. And these issues, when you do a chart of Nigeria's map now, you do from the northwest, you come down to the north central to the southwest, following almost the same trail, you will see a cluster, if you do like a scatter diagram of incidents across the country, you will see almost a cluster along a trail coming down south, even to Oyo, even Ogun State. So when you don't deal with the issue of criminality, and we color it with religion, mm. or we color it with uh, ethnic considerations, then the criminals will continue to play a fast one on us hmm. and eventually nobody will see it, 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 it's very dark systems well let me, let, let's let, let's flip this uh, back to abuja but let, let me ask uh, uh, mr Wadu, uh, well the the the, the uh, some of the issues that uh, mr adekoya has raised here gives me concern for instance the the, the specific part of not dealing with the real issues of people not being brought to book of uh, lack of justice so to speak of uh, things happening over and over again and no one is no one is arrested and just as you said earlier we make announcements and that is it will this end insecurity will this cause any of these issues that we keep talking over and over again about 20, 20, more than 20 years, he said, about what's happening in the plateau. How are we going to get ahead of it if the police doesn't do what it's supposed to do as and when due? You heard him talk about the fact that information goes out, intelligence reports goes out, and the police is almost inefficient. 
Sorry, can I repeat the question again? I said, I I get you. Yeah, can we mm. deal with these issues when injustice pervades? Please get information and we do not get ahead of the, of, the, of the curve so that this insecurity challenge, which we already have information about, doesn't happen. Well, um, if the police has credible intelligence reports, they are duty bound to act on this <coughs> information. And um, there should be no sentiments. We've had instances where some people within the system, not just the police uh, alone, everywhere, even cooperate with the um, the criminals, and that, to a large extent, frustrates and even sabotages the efforts of government to maintain peace and order. So I think the police, uh, the police really need to sit up. Like I said before, I commend the deployment of the DIG operations with some other men to Plateau State to try and see the way they're going to restore order. And I hope, hopefully, they will restore order. But my question, what I keep on insisting on is this, sustainability. We don't. We, we are tired of hearing the old oh, security men have been deployed to the place. The place, place is calm now. Normalcy has uh, returned back and all of that. After three, four, five days, the same issue comes up. And even with the uh, bigger casualty figures and all of that, so we need, really need to be consistent. We need to sustain our efforts. Mm. But one of our biggest challenges, I must tell you, is this: all the security agencies we have in this country. They are overwhelmed, they are overstressed. We cannot deny the fact that they are doing their utmost best. Regrettably, the utmost best is not good enough. Cannot tackle all these problems that we're having now. Mm. So, so like, like in the police, for instance, the United Nations ratio given is 400, one police officer to 400 persons. I just want to quickly ask you, because yeah. the guest in Lagos believes that uh, largely this is a social issue, not exactly a policing issue, even though he believes that the police, you know, had a very strong role, would have had a very strong preventative role in this particular matter. Um, how much... Well, I say, what are the chances that you're giving to the police? Right now, the president has also issued a statement. I'd like to read part of that statement saying, it is widely known that Plateau State has been one of the states affected by herd of farmer clashes, which have in a significant way been curtailed following the intense peace-building efforts of the administration of Governor Simon Lalong. However, to be clear, this is not an agriculturalist on pastoralist confrontation, but rather a direct, brazen, and wickedly motivated attack on members of a community exercising their rights to travel freely and to follow the faith of their choosing. With the evident preparedness of their attackers, it is clear this was a well-conceived and pre-arranged assault on a known target, location and religious persuasion of the travelers, not an opportunist ambush. Well, the presidency is saying that uh, they stand steadfast with... Um, Christians and Muslims at this time in condemnation of this latest attack and expect and insist that justice is swiftly but fairly delivered to the perpetrators. So those are some of the uh, statements coming from the president. Mm -hmm. Now with the investigation about to be carried out by the DIG, which is who has been sent to the plateau, and also the fact that this is the root of the problem, is a social problem. I mean, the president's statement did acknowledge that there have been problems before on the plateau, but isolates this as being different. Um, do you think that we, we stand a chance of being able to break the cycle of conflict on the plateau with this particular incident? Well, uh, let, me, let me correct one impression. Criminality manifests in various forms. Now you are saying it's social. Now it has ended up being a criminal offense. And a very serious one at that. So the policy has to sit and call it. Whether it's social, it's uh, herdsmen and farmers clash and all of that. At the end of the day, lives are lost. Properties are destroyed. It's still a crime. And the police must step in and do the needful. And like I said, in the past, we've always deployed officers to go and do this, do that, and all of that. But 
it's like a recurring circle. Let us look for a permanent solution. And my permanent solution I'm saying is this, look, let us have enough security men on ground. The level we've reached now, the level we have reached now, we need to have overwhelming security presence, virtually everywhere. And those security operatives must be well-educated, well-trained, well-informed, so that they don't misuse their presence everywhere to create more problems for the citizenry. They are there to provide security for them 24-7. Most of these criminals are preaching everywhere. They have their own intelligence network. Where there is so much of a women security presence somewhere, they are watching you, you they are there for like three, four days, you now announce the world that there's, you know, sanity has been restored, they have scam all of that, and you pull out, that's when they come in. And something again is done. So this in and out, in and out, we must get beyond that level. Let us sustain security presence everywhere. Because these guys, when they come around and find that they security operation here and there, that would deter them. And that's always talking about issue of deterrence. Absence of deterrence, if there's no deterrence, it fuels impunity. It fuels impunity. So some people might want to tell, oh, well, we have security operators somewhere, and we're even attacked. Yes. Because some of these guys are so bold. The Lord is going to do it. If we succeed, if we die, so be it. But I can assure you, if we have enough security men on ground. My colleague in Lagos once said that the military is overwhelmed. You're like every other security agency, they're all overwhelmed. And they really need to be adequately empowered, adequately motivated. Look at the forest we've been talking about, Sambisa forest, forest here and there and all of that. Who says we cannot mobilize a t combined team of soldiers, mobile policemen and all of that, with armored vehicles, protect, go and attack the place? How can we keep on saying, oh, they are hidden in a forest? Can we have access to those forests? No matter how big they will be. We tell you, have and all of that. They tell you, yes, they brought an aircraft down in Zamfara. But they are saying aircraft that can even resist those kind of shots. So we really need to beef up security. Give them the training, the empowerment that can overcome our current challenges. We cannot keep on doing things the same way and expect different results. Indeed. Yes, using the old style. No, 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 no. Things have changed. So we need to employ different tactics That's and, right. and be dynamic. And be dynamic. As things are changing. Be very, very proactive too, you know. Well, it's a fine place to leave it. We have to thank you for your contributions this morning. We do hope that, um, you know, that somehow this will mark a breaking point in this cycle of conflict. Barista Felix Obwadu. Obaudu is a former Assistant Inspector General of Police. Thank you for joining us on Sunrise Thank you for having this me. morning. It's my pleasure. Well, we'll take, uh, well, let me quickly send this to Lagos, Ayo, mm -hmm. the last words of our guest with um, Mr. Adekoya. Well, certainly, well, your last words, 30 seconds. Yeah, so um, I think the failures of security we see across the country is just uh, indicative of a design problem. In risk treatment, you must accept what your risk and threat conditions are. Accept it and design something that works. The mere continuous failure of security across the country is only indicative that whatever it is we are relying on to protect life and property is defective. So we must redesign, and it must come from the grassroots, bottom-up approach. Until we take a local approach with bites at a local level, you know, we will not solve any of these issues. You mm. see, the crime environment is so dynamic that you can't sit in Abuja and, you know, cage the, the thinking of the local criminal in Bogor or in Mimalari or anywhere. You understand? So oh, I see now, in, in the case where we have on our hands in Basa, local government. Absolutely. Basa, so we okay. must retweak and have a dynamic approach to the dynamic threats that we face, and it must be local. We well, have to thank you very much for, for your contribution this morning. Onyeka Kachi Adekoya is a security consultant. Thank you very much for thank your time you. and thoughts. We'll take a break now for another issue of equally significant importance. Do stay with us.